here oh, previously. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so they were using Zoom text reader. So they were using their computer with a, a screen magnifier and a screen reader. Um, but nothing as robust as JAWS. But now JAWS is installed on all our PCs. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, and VoiceOver is enabled on all the Macs. So uh, that is an option here in this lab. Um, it's not available on all the other labs on campus uh, yet. We are trying to get that going. So um, that is something that we are striving to do. But um, I, I know, I, you, you may or may not have heard a lot of the stuff that we do on this campus here at USC, anyways, is going to be on a case by case basis. You'll meet with a disability counselor. And most likely, you'll also meet with Kathy if you come here to this campus and myself. But we really want to know what works for you. Uh, there is no one, one answer that works for every student. So uh, I know for Karen, we, Braille. Uh, we, she had some quizzes last semester that we yeah. had. Bra I had brailed for her, and uh, so that she could take those uh, those quizzes. Um, all of her text, uh, electronic text too. So he helps with scanning books. That's another big thing too. Yeah. Um, I try to get books uh, directly from the publisher as soon as. So the students are responsible for purchasing purchasing the books as as normal. Um, any student would buy a book, and then they would. Uh, come to me and say, I, you know, I have electronic text, e-text as an accommodation, and I will look for the books. If I can't find the books on all the different memberships that we have or um, other places that we look, uh, we have to cut the binding off the book and scan it, and then um, OCR it and, and do as many corrections as possible. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I can't make the book perfect, otherwise you would, you'd, you'd get the book after the semester was over and your class was done. <laughs> yeah. So as, as much as possible, I try to get it to, you, uh, to the students as quickly as possible, but also the understanding is it's not going to be perfect because, um, you know, classes are going on. And, and Karen has done a really good job about being real proactive. Even before summer semester started, she was emailing her professors for fall semester saying, what are your books? I need to know them because I need to have them converted and created in, all, in a format that I can I can read. And so, a lot of times students don't self-advocate. And traditionally on this campus, the book list is released two weeks before classes mm -hmm. start. Mm -hmm. So imagine two weeks before the classes start, as many students as Disability Services handles, and I'm the only one doing all the electronic text. So it's just it's. I'm inundated with requests. I get to them as quickly as possible. But again, if you are proactive with your professors in any in any institution, really, if you're proactive with your professors and say, "Hey, I I need your book list. If you could please get that to me, uh, it would really help with accommodations that I have." And um, you know that that's one of the things that uh, I would encourage you guys to do anywhere you go. Mm -hmm. um, so. I don't know if there's any other questions or if uh, Karen wanted me to talk about anything else specifically. Um, maybe like the, the, what they call it? Outsourcing the text too? Yeah, huh? the, um, we were so Like for pictures and diagrams? Yeah, I think oh, Kathy yes. can For post. Braille, you mean? Yeah, like Kathy yes, can. we, um, uh, for, when did we bring Oh, we had, it was like 600 images of the brain. Yeah, for a neuroscience class. For one of our classes, classes. can you imagine? Mm -hmm. But, um, so we had, and, and there was some text in there too, so we outsourced that, but that required a lot of lead time. We So she would get it back piece by piece, and so we um, actually used the, the vendor is um, the, they serve the community college district, so they, I, you know, there's a lot more blind individuals in that in those schools so um yeah so <coughs> we outsource that we don't have albert does some braille more tech you know tech stuff um but his job is not here to do braille if we have major braille we'll outsource it so but it again requires lead time and outsourcing basically means you send it to another place to get braille yeah. so they don't braille it here yeah so that's why it's even more important that you get it ahead of time yeah because yeah. some stuff get lost the man you know there's all the kind of stuff that could go wrong actually but 
So just allow time. Time is really huge. So. Especially if you know the nature of your class has yes. a lots of images. Like if you're taking yeah. some foreign language that is not just regular standard English text, mm -hmm. that's going to require more time to do. For example, I'm taking a Chinese class mm -hmm. that no ever no blind person ever takes in California except for one. <laughs> so yeah, that would be you. Definitely, <laughs> they it took it takes time. Yeah, some schools actually do do that, like where yeah. they braille the um, the diagrams. Mm -hmm. I was taking a geography class last semester, mm -hmm. and um, the people in the tech lab, well, they had trouble with some diagrams, but they managed to, I don't know what they use, but they managed to emboss them. Yeah, there are, there are some embossers that will do diagrams. The embosser that we have is, is a strictly a text yeah, the embosser, one. Uh -huh. so um, I do a lot of... Yeah. Simple. I mean, just text file. If the professor has a word document, I can I can do it quickly. Yeah, that's uh, well as easy. fast as the thing embosses. Really, it's not fast. I can do it. Um, hey, speaking of diagrams, um, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's true, but there there is a program that has to do with um diagrams, right? Like, or on the computer. Yeah. There are lots of them. About reading a diagram. Or no, like creating one. Cre like. Well, not creating one, but like also like you're able to like see it like like let's say if, like you can't do it that way like um you guys were explaining it, I mean you guys could go on the computer and 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 have it read to you what what the diagram is oh, right. Description. Mm -hmm. oh, well, it depends on how complex and yes. detailed. The diagram, the diagram yeah, like the diagram of the brain has several different parts. Different to the parts brain. to the brain, yeah. so it's hard to. complex curve or scatter plot or histogram. It might be yeah. a little difficult to explain. In words, you have to you really know. see the image and or feel the image. You can see, I was thinking, like for instance, since I know it takes time, right? Mm -hmm. I was thinking that well, it could be a little bit easier and maybe a little more, more faster but then I mean yeah I mean in a way because I mean but then I noticed well, you guys have to we it has to be coordination between yeah and for simpler like she said the complexity is huge like some of the images that we out outsourced for them to um, make tactily they sent back that this is too complex we can't do they it they couldn't yeah so there were you know sometimes yeah a, a verbal description like you know, might be better I don't know but some things the but see, the but see, it would probably depend. I think it would probably depend on what what it is. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah, it does. It's good to be open, though. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, do you ever reuse books, or are they updated so often that? <laughs> Don't go there. No, yeah, we, go we, uh, <laughs> once I have a file of a book in any format, I keep the file when we store it in our, in our servers. But the professors, the change, yeah, they editions. change. They change editions. Sometimes the publisher will change an edition. Oh yeah, so the and, diagrams change. And so. Or someone's it's just a page number. I mean, someone's it's like, is it really worth a new edition? But um, you can also email your professors. Like, let's say we have the current edition or the spring thing that was available during the spring. We have it digitally, but they're using a new edition. Sometimes I've seen students ask. May I use the second edition instead of the third edition? And the professor mm -hmm. will say, yeah, it's no big deal. It's just some little. But yeah. that's just a picture depends. change. That's yeah. true. Or like a, the chapters are in different orders or something. Yeah. 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 It's usually not a big yeah. thing. So it would, it would be, often. you know, a lot, a lot of times just interacting with your professors and saying, you know, if there's, if we do have that book in an older version, you know, just asking the professors, would this be okay? If not, you know, then we, of course, go with the mm -hmm. step of having to get it, so. Okay. Anything else, Karen? I must think, think like important? if you've looked at the list of accommodations, I know like you were just given the two sheets, but mm -hmm. maybe if we just go down the list quickly to see if you guys uh -huh. understand what the accommodations are, because some of the wording is kind of like what yeah. is a scribe. Oh yeah, that was a little weird for me. Which one? The, the list no. of accommodations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want um? Okay, the first one is Braille for instructional materials and exams. That's pretty um, clear. Do you have questions? Yeah. And then the next one's e text for textbooks, handouts, and instructional materials and exams. And that's like Microsoft, right? E no, that's really what no. Albert just explained. Yeah, yeah that's e oh, okay. No, the, 
Now, I was curious, um, the e-text, mm -hmm. isn't that the same thing as, like, basically scanning the books most, or is that different? There, there's a, e-text can be, a, yeah. it can be a scanned image of a book, a PDF, that's not an OCR, it can be an OCR PDF, it can be a Kurzweil document, it can be a Word document. Yeah, that's um, what I meant, like different file there's, types. There's, there's, there's different files. Yeah, E-text yeah. is a huge Lots category. It's just an electronic version of a book. Yeah. Whatever version mm -hmm. or file mm -hmm. type it is, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it is what it, it is. So um, typically we would provide, uh, you know, like I said, whatever works best for the student. Um, if a student just wants a PDF that's been OCR, then that's what we provide. And we, but we let them know these options are available also. So. Mm -hmm. So they meet with Albert and a one-on-one -on -one meeting at the beginning of each semester and find out what the needs are. Um, and then large print, which we have to get the professors involved in that. We don't, and usually stuff nowadays is provided electronically and you can yeah. manipulate the size of the font, background, and things like that. But um, if the professor has this last minute copy of a copy to hand out in class, um, that he just decided right before he got to class, it's something he's going to have to do because, you know, it's just more practical. Okay, books from Learning Ally, which was previously recording for the online dyslexic, dyslexic, which we don't use that much here anymore. We used to, it used to be the main thing, but we don't really use that. I'm sure you guys have heard of that yeah. organization. Yeah, I don't think we use them at all. They've expanded their services and the types of files that can Yeah, they have. It. Yeah, so do you guys use that now? Who uses it now? Not really. Like, I use Bookshare though. more. Okay. I can't find any of my stuff on anything because mm -hmm. they're all special collections made by UC Berkeley to make you pay two hundred dollars. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> and then next semester it's worthless because every it's a new semester book, so it's you a can new sell. special yeah. collection. Yeah. Yeah, special. Uh, so it's more complicated trying to search through that way. Yep. It doesn't exist. Not yeah, because it's, it's a custom published book yeah. that's yeah. published by the university. So well, we actually have those here too. Yeah, the right yeah. course, course readers. readers. Yeah. So a yep. professor puts a, together a course reader for his course, and sometimes he will have a copy of a copy of a copy. He doesn't <laughs> provide it to us digitally or anything, so that can be a challenge sometimes as well. Yeah, um, what I've done was able to establish a relationship with our custom publishing department. So I can email them and say, I have a student in this course, give them the course number. And all that they have no books. They just use the course reader, yeah. which is the custom published book. And they're they're real good about getting getting me the file. Uh, it's just, it's typically an OCR PDF, and then I can manipulate it from there. Okay. Uh, let's Could we talk about testing really quick? Yes. Maybe like not all of them, but just a little bit about testing. We only have a little bit of time. I know. Okay. Well, let's talk about testing right now. And um, um, so what happens? Campuses. Uh, handle things differently. Yeah. Some uh, campuses, uh, most students with disabilities, uh, many of them, uh, not visually impaired, but others, they may get time and a half for their exams. Typically, uh, someone who is blind or low vision gets double time. That has to be really thought out and planned in advance. We have this thing which we fondly call the blue sheet, yeah. which has to be filled out and signed. Um, by the professor as to well in advance, and we need that by two uh, two weeks before, oh, because wow. we don't have hardly any space. So if two weeks before what the before the exam test. date? Oh, the exam. Yeah. So if you're a student with a disability um, that just needs time and a half, that's the only accommodation you need. Then you get tested with your professor. If you need double time or if you need special technology or a reader or a scribe or a CCTV or JAWS, things like that, then you will test here. And we were going to show you a testing room. It's just this little tiny empty room, what, maybe four by six or something. It's not very big. Um, we just don't have that many spaces. So the people who get tested here are those that have the, the, those type of accommodations. So um, And you're in the room by yourself. Yeah. You go in there with the test, close yeah. the door, there's a little window where somebody watches you take your test. Yeah. So Probably usually you don't bring your phone in, you don't bring your computer, unless yeah. you've been approved to have certain things. Um, and it's, it's time, so someone's proctoring it, so to speak, even though you're alone. Now, if you need something read, of course you're not alone, but um, so that just has to be thought out well in advance. Um, anything else about testing here? <coughs> Getting the test back to the professor. Yeah, oh, getting that's the, fun. Well, that's yeah, and it's up to the professor. <laughs> Does the student bring it back? Does the, the professor come and pick it up? 
Does the uh, TA pick teaching it up? Assistant. Yeah, teaching assistant. Um, so that has, to, and that's all on that blue. Everything is on that blue sheet and approved by the professor. Um, so yeah, that just has to be done. We like people to do it to begin the semester. They have their syllabus. They know when their exams are. Try and do everything ahead of time. You know, there are some universities that have these amazing testing centers where they'll have like. 30 corrals, which is just the small testing Corral. area. The <laughs> house. Yeah, so, but we, we aren't set up like that. Ours is more um, not centralized, so we have a lot of the exams taking place uh, with the professor. But if you have special accommodations, the ones I mentioned mostly, the, then you can test here. Anything else, Karen, about testing? I was going to, um, for the scribe, I just want to mention, Z, for your question, I asked my supervisor about it, and um, she was saying, you know, basically, as long as most students who have a need for it typically get approved because there's, their documentation supports that need for it, so, you know, if you, let's say you came to USC and you requested the, that scribe, then you would most likely be able to utilize that service. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, a real quick. Okay, so um, note takers, maybe one of the important note takers. That's a big one. Some, and I noticed some blind people who are blind, they use note takers, and some don't. So I don't know. But we use student note takers. We use uh, students who are already in the class. So the way we do it here, we um, you you're welcome to approach someone in your class or have the professor make an announcement. It can be anonymous or not, and then they. Um, are required to have, especially if it's um, for someone with a, who's visually impaired, uh, it, the notes typed. They upload the notes or put them on our note-taking website, and then you can at any point. We ask them to do it, I believe, within 24 hours. I don't know if that's still true. 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. So you won't be like low behind. And then you can just go to the mm -hmm. DSP website and download them. Um, so that's actually our most common, that and extended time on exams, our com most common accommodations. Mm -hmm. yeah, some schools don't have note takers. What was that? Oh. Some schools don't have note takers. Which like I find time. that very strange. I think that's kind of a new, I heard some. It's interesting because that's like one of the simplest accommodations to. Yeah, yeah but it, you got to pay the people. Yeah. Oh, and what we do, because sometimes. When you pay people, they show up more. <laughs> but yeah. um, we used to pay them by hour, but that's so expensive. We give them like a $100 mm -hmm. gift card at the end of the semester. If they did two classes, maybe 150 or 200 But they will get some sort of compensation. But they're in class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. So you anyway. want someone who's consistent. Yeah. You know, if you decide. And, and their condensation is... Need. What was yeah. that, Karen? Well, depending on how you need your notes. If they're mm -hmm. handwritten and you're large print, maybe that's easier because you can see them. You can scan it and enlarge the file, but if you're a braille reader and you have a bunch of handwritten notes for a math class, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I, I thought the math class might be handwritten. Right? But you could, but yeah. now speaking of note taking, um, we kind of have to go a little soon. I know, I know, make it a little quick. I know, awesome. yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, you could also, you could also record, like, yeah, yeah, that's class. another accommodation on the list. Like if, uh -huh. mm -hmm. You provide your own recorder though, but we can approve, and then we have to let the professor know there's going to be someone recording you. We do need to move, and um, yeah. if you need to use the restroom before lunch, let's do that now, and then we'll go down. At least to wash hands because you've been touching. 